Now today I'm going to continue the discussion about safety. This is part two of my Safety First video series. And there are lots of things I can mention, probably more than I can do in hours of videotaping. So I'm going to just cover some things very quickly and uh, you can transfer those to your own shop. Some of the things I didn't mention in the first video, when you're turning, be focused. Don't come out and be tired and turning when you're not really into it, you can have an accident. Be focused, uh, be concentrated on what you're doing. Don't drink, and you know what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about coffee, uh, just use common sense. Now, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is when you start finishing something on the lathe, we often use a paper towel. And I like to use these uh, shop towels made by Scott. You can pick those up in a lot of places. And they'll rip. But if you have a piece of cloth like this, and you have that wrapped around your finger and you're finishing something, not good. So no, do not use that. You know what they say, never say never. This is one of those situations where I would say never. Never use cloth when on a rotating machine. That can cause you trouble. And there's a shirt with long sleeves. Okay, don't do that either. There's a reason why these smocks have uh, short sleeves like that, so you don't get wrapped up in there. Hair, I don't have to worry about that anymore, but uh, some of you guys and gals have ponytails or long hair. Um, years ago in our middle school, I, I used to spend a lot of time in our, our middle school. I wasn't the shop teacher, but there was a young lady. Now I worked in the middle school for many, many years and I was not the shop teacher, but I spent a lot of time in the shop. And about 15 years ago, there was a nice eighth grade girl who had nice blonde hair and she had a drill like this and she had it up to her hair and keyed it like that and ripped out about that much of her hair on the side of her head. You never know when an accident's going to happen. Sometimes you can't predict accidents. Being safe to me is predicting an accident. So we'll get past the uh, paper towel. Let's go on to the next area and that's chucking things onto your lathe. If you have lots of options in chucking something onto your lathe, you can always pick a safer alternative. Maybe not absolutely the safest thing, but uh, here's a chuck. And you've seen other wood turners or myself use a scroll chuck. And that's always a good option. You can put something on there very securely. If you're not sure, bring your tail stock up for extra support. And I often do that just, just because it uh, lessens vibration for one thing. So, scroll chuck, good option. You may not have 10 scroll chucks uh, with jaws that will go from 0 to 6 inches. A face plate. Here's a, here's a face plate with a glue block attached to it. Now the, this is a great option. And when I first started turning, I used a lot of glue blocks on a face plate just because they're cheap for one thing. And this is something that I started on one of my videos. I burned it, if you remember that video. And I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to glue it on there later on. You can do that for a couple different reasons. Whoop! You can do that for a couple different reasons. One thing, it's safe. You glue that on there with some good carpenter's glue and that's attached pretty firmly. When you're doing a waste block like this, it should be cross grain. The grain's going across this way. It should not be an end grain glue block. Glue doesn't hold well in end grain, so that's a good tip there. So there's one option. And the other thing is I can put this on my lathe and take it off, put it back on a uh, hundred times and it's still lined up. I'm not gonna take that off and I'll part that off at the very end of my project, whatever I'm gonna make out of that. At this point, I'm not sure. 
Now when you're working around any equipment, you have to analyze what you're doing and what this procedure is going to result in. Is it going to be safe? Is it going to be uh, a, a dangerous situation? Here's a piece of wood. Okay, there's the end grain. And that would be a spindle turning if I were to chuck that up between centers, put it in there. Now we can do this a number of different ways. Here's a spur drive that we can bang in the, in the end of that, put that in there, bring our tail stock up for support, and spin that and turn that fairly safe. Now, what's going to happen if my spur drive isn't seated in there too well? The piece is going to spin. Probably nothing's going to happen. It could come off the lathe, which can be dangerous if you're turning at 3,000 RPMs. You just have to control that speed to be safe. Um, probably it's going to spin off and roll off on the floor. Now, let me relate a story again from our middle school. This was years ago. And I would go in the middle school and help kids on the lathe. And this happened when I was not in there, so I don't have to, you know, be accused of anything unsafe. Um, they had this old Powermatic, which is kind of like a bulldozer in terms of lathes, you know, big, heavy machine. If you got caught up into that thing, you'd lose very badly. Well, a young man had a log about that big, and he had on the end of that log a faceplate. He had that screwed into the end of it. Okay, now here's another one of those never say never, never do it. But putting screws in end grain is something that's just bound to fail. It may work, it may be okay. If I put that into my, my headstock here, like that, if I bring my tail stock up, that's probably safe. Get that tail stock up there. What happened with this young man is he had this chucked up into the lathe and he didn't have the tail stock up. Now the story goes that somebody came up and cranked up the speed on it, which I really believe in a middle school full of 8th graders, cranked up the speed. He turned that on and this started rotating and the screws came loose. Well, there's always going to be one screw in that faceplate that's the last screw holding on. And this thing was like a cam rotating around like this and it was flung up 20 feet on the side of a wall. Now this is a log about that big and about that big around. Well, I never would have guessed that would happen. I mean, what can be safer than putting a faceplate on, screws in, putting that on your leg? Well, you don't have your tail stock up, and that starts coming loose, and you're turning too fast. Anyway, you really have to anticipate those kinds of things. Something everybody should have in their shop is a first aid kit. And luckily I've only had to use that for little scrapes and scratches and that sort of thing. Uh, but it's good to have that in your shop. A fire extinguisher. I've got a fire extinguisher right there on the wall. And I've also got water. And I've got a hose uh, connection that I can just put a hose on very quickly to that if I have a fire. So if you're a smoker, be very careful. And maybe we'll get some of those Cuban cigars that are going to be available. Okay, that's another story. <laughs> okay. Okay, faceplate, screw center, glue block, scroll chuck, um, a jam chuck. If you've seen some of my videos and I'm doing a little box like this, I often um, jam the lid on. Okay, jam that on. No tailstock support. I finish the lid. Then I reverse the base of that into a scrap piece of wood and I jam that on there. If this comes off at even 2000 RPMs, probably not a lot's going to happen. All right, you may ruin your piece, but uh, if you're turning a big bowl and you have that jammed on, that's a different story. So, uh, pretty safe procedure. Uh, just be careful about that. Now, I've got a whole box of, of round pieces. And some of those were made intentionally. 
uh, out of some cheap wood. Oops. And uh, they're, they've got a tenon on it. All I've got to do is put that in a scroll chuck and I've got a little jam chuck for a, a project. And, and actually here's one jammed on there that I was messing around with. So uh, there you go. And that's, that's the idea right there. That's jammed on there pretty well and that's going to hold if I put that in a scroll chuck. Yeah, see I can hardly get that off. Of course I, I'm old and weak. So on to the next topic. Now I'm going to cover some of those other obvious items that we need to be concerned about on the lathe. Think about your eyes, ears, lungs, and face protection. What kinds of things do we need? A lot of us wear glasses. Now, what will your glasses protect? It might protect you from just a small item coming off the lathe. It might protect you from some dust. But if you have anything substantial, you need a face shield. And this particular face shield is pretty popular now. It's got a frame going all the way around the actual uh, visor part of this, or the, the, you know, the part you see through. And I think this really strengthens that and stiffens that up quite a bit. So this is a bionic face shield. Uh, made by UVEX, UVEX, and you can find those for 25, 30 bucks. They're really a good, a good deal. This is a chemical respirator. Now, what's the difference between a chemical respirator and one that looks like this? This chemical respirator will protect you from vapors. If you're spraying anything out of a spray can or a rattle can. This is the kind of respirator you need. The filters are charcoal filters or something else in there that will filter out vapor. Now, if you don't have the money to spend on a Trend Air Shield uh, for $400, now I believe you should have this in your shop, a chemical respirator. You can also use this for dust and it works just fine. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but it'll save your lungs. Now, why do we want to go to something like this? These are 3M products, by the way. Now, these have filters on them that are only good for dust, not chemicals, not for vapors. So don't go into your spray booth and think this is going to protect you. This is for just dust only. Well, why would we use this? instead of the chemical respirator because this is much lighter and these filters are a lot cheaper. So there's one and here's another one I've got. Over the past 30 years I've probably gone through one of these a year at least. I've got three of them in my shop right now so this is another one just for dust. Here is my Trend Air Shield Pro and I love it. It's a little bit bulky but boy it's nice and, and uh, that really is is great when you're working around a lot of dust and shavings. Not only for the dust, it also offers a lot of protection if something comes off your lathe. Now the last thing I'm going to do in this video is a little bit of a spindle turning. But the topic right now is going to be on using a glove around rotating machinery. I would say to you, never do it. I do wear a glove from time to time, and you've probably seen one or two of my videos where I use a glove. And I'll show you how I use this on a spindle turning. It's inherently dangerous because it's cloth and it can get caught into something in your lathe and you're going to have a problem. So don't do this unless you know you're not going to be injured. If you've ever seen videos on uh, YouTube or TV of guys jumping off a mountain with a parachute, they call that base jumping or a building. Now, just because you see that doesn't mean it gives you the ability to do that. I think those guys are a little wacko, but it's fun to watch them. But I sure wouldn't do it. I wouldn't go up in a hot air balloon. I'm a big chicken. But I know that I'm not going to get hurt wearing a glove after 
all the years I've spent around machinery. Now there are a couple situations where I would use a glove around a lathe. If I'm working on the inside of a bowl right here and it gets a little bit thin, I will back that up with my hand. If I don't have a glove on, it's pretty tough to do that without really creating some friction and causing some pain. So I would back up that bowl here and cut on the inside. That's one situation. And later on as I uh, get this round, I will back this up with my hand and I'll show you that. Now I have the spindle pretty much down to round and I'm showing you here how that flexes. And you don't want a tool riding up on that spindle because you're going to ruin your project. I'm going to just fine tune the outside of this with a spindle roughing gouge. And I forgot my face shield so I'm going to get that and uh, continue working on the outside of this spindle. And right now I'm going to work a little bit just backing this up with my hand without a glove. It can be done. And sometimes if you do this, if you do it, you might just do a little sanding on that and it makes it a little bit smoother and less painful, but it can build up a little bit of friction. Now right now we're talking about using a glove. I think the main thing is keeping that glove away from any metal. When I'm turning a bowl, there are times when my bowl may have a defect in it, it might have a knot, or some area that could snag on that glove, so I'm going to be very careful when I'm doing that. Now I'm back to the lathe with the glove on my hand to show you the same operation I just showed without the glove. And this is pretty much it. Again, don't do this. If you really feel like you're in danger, uh, I've been doing this a long time. There are some well-known wood turners who I've seen on DVDs uh, wear a glove during a turning operation. Does not mean that you should do it or I should do it, but uh, I feel okay. The lathe is turned off right now and I'm just pointing out that if you get that glove around that uh, spinning metal, you may have more of a problem. Now as this video comes to an end and I complete this spindle, I failed to mention one thing about lathe speed. One of the main things that indicates lathe speed is vibration. If you encounter vibration as you're turning something, say a bowl or a larger project, it's a good idea to back off the lathe speed a little bit. I can turn a pen at 4000 RPM and feel pretty safe, but if I'm turning something out of balance or a larger bowl, I'm not going to spin that wood all that much faster. Now I keep thinking of things to mention. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the ABCs of wood turning. I'm going to anchor my tool before I contact the wood, right there, and I'm going to run the bevel into the wood, and then I'm going to raise the tool handle and pick up that cut. So I'll do that two or three times here at the very end. So anchor, bevel, cut. And I'm going to turn the lathe on here, and I'll show you that. So anchor the tool, and I'm going to contact the wood with the bevel right there. And I'm going to raise the tool handle till I can pick up the cut right there. You see the shavings going down the flute. And I'll do that a couple times. Anchor, bevel, cut. And that really is a good idea. You can save yourself and save the tool and the project from any danger. So this is the last word I would say to you. Don't depend on me or anybody else for your own safety. If you're not sure, don't do it. Find out the proper procedure. Be safe. And if you have any questions, contact me. If I've forgotten something, please leave a comment so other people can read that because there's a vast amount of knowledge out there. One more thing I'll add is the AAW has a sheet on safety on their website. And I'll put a link up to that because that's very good. And there's just tons of information on lathe safety. So thank you. Once again, I'll talk to you later. Be safe.